what's up guys welcome back or to the channel my name is Mike and today we are gonna go over basically why I prefer or why you should get a manual over a automatic if you're gonna be off-roading your vehicle now basically I made myself a list of 10 different items and while going over it it kind of seems like I'm biased towards manual transmissions and that's not the case uh, I actually drive an automatic as my daily driver and if I were to go out and buy a brand new Jeep today, I would be really hard pressed not to get the automatic. And I'll tell you why at the end of the video, but honestly, I think I would still go with the manual. And here's my 10 reasons why I think you guys should also go with the manual. A manual transmission will give you a built-in hill descent control. And all the newer vehicles that are automatic, they all have that built-in and they all have that option and they all have hill descent control as something you can get or use or it has it built in and that's a great feature now a lot of you are thinking hill descent control why is that going to come in handy i can press the brakes i can hold the brakes while i'm going down the hill yes yes you can but hill descent control is very important when you're going down a steep grade with loose terrain or loose uh just loose whatever underneath your tires is loose either gravel soil sand uh, there could be many different instances. You could be on wet rock. You even could be on wet pavement. The reason you don't want to press the brakes while you're going down is because as soon as those tires lose traction, while you're going down that grade, they'll lock up. They're not going to continue to turn. They're going to lock up and you're going to start to slide. The vehicle will either turn to the right or to the left. It'll start to shimmy a bit, but your tires aren't going to stop you. You're going to continue moving forward even when you press the brakes and you expect yourself to be stopped. That's quite dangerous. Now, if your vehicle is rolling at a very slow speed but continuously rolling and using the engine and the transmission to kind of brake itself as an engine brake, it uses the compression in the engine to hold itself in place and it doesn't move further than the RPMs will allow and unless you're actually giving it throttle it'll stay at that constant speed and it'll continuously go down and that's hill descent control and in an automatic transmission they have that built in where it'll actually keep you in control and keep the wheels spinning so that you can continuously move slowly down the grade and not go out of control and not slide in a manual transmission if you put it into four low you throw it into first or second gear you can let go of the brake let go of the gas go straight down the hill and have no issues. It'll continuously go the same speed. It won't ramp up in speed. It won't continuously go up like an automatic would. If you were in an automatic without hill descent control and you were even in four low, as soon as you start going down that hill and the gravity starts pulling your vehicle faster and faster and wants to increase your speed, your vehicle will increase in speed and you'll shift gears and it'll continuously increase in speed and when you go to press the brakes it'll start to slide and that's that dangerous scenario so you want it to slowly creep down that hill and basically hill descent control allows you to do that in a manual transmission it's built right in you don't have to think twice about it it's automatically on whenever you're in low range and you're driving down a hill or up a hill if you let go of the brake and let go of the gas it will continuously roll at a very slow rate and it won't go up in speed just because you're going down a hill because of the compression of the engine. For that reason, I like manual transmissions for doing those types of things, going down hills, going down steep grades, and just having that ability to feel like you're in control and not run off the track or run off the path or off the trail and just go crazy and not be able to stop your vehicle. And it's very confidence inspiring when you have that ability to actually go down that grade and not have to hold the brake and you feel that the engine is kind of holding you from running away. My second point is there's less electronics to screw up. Uh, you have less things that are connected to your transmission. The only thing that's connected to your transmission is you. Uh, you don't have any kind of sensors. You don't have, you might have a temperature sensor, but you don't have any kind of solenoids and sensors and plugs all on the outside of the transmission because you don't have solenoids in there to shift gears for you. And the beauty of that is you don't have to worry about water crossings as much. You don't have to worry about having things get torn out as much. You don't have to worry about having things uh, malfunction on you because they're dirty or they're not plugged in or whatever the case may be. Uh, there is no solenoids and no electronics. The only thing that uh, 
makes the transmission shift gears is your arm and your leg pressing the clutch. So basically, as long as you're still able to use your arm and your leg, you'll be able to get out of there. And even if you lose a gear or two, you'll still be able to move the vehicle and get it out of there. The worst case that I've seen is somebody lost the clutch because they were in a mud hole and they tried to shift gears while they were in the mud hole. And when the clutch came off the flywheel or the pressure plate, uh, basically you had mud get in there and it didn't want to grip after and it was just sliding and it, it wasn't gripping, your clutch was slipping. The issue with that is, is you won't be able to drive it even if you get it in gear because it won't grip, it won't actually catch. That's one thing that you would have to worry about, but at that point, as sunken as he was, if you had an automatic transmission, I'm sure there would have been some issues with something at some point as well, some sensor or something, and you don't want to get water in any transmission, manual or automatic, but definitely there's a lot less things to screw up when you have a manual. And that leads me to my third point, less chance of getting stranded. Uh, you won't be getting stranded because of losing a gear. If you lose a gear, you still have your other five, your other six gears, I mean, your other four or your other five gears, depending on if you have a five or six speed. Uh, you're pretty much always going to be able to get yourself off the trail. Even if your starter dies, you'll be able to bump start yourself if you have a manual. You can't do that if you have an automatic. So there's lots of cases where it'll be definitely helpful to have a manual transmission over an automatic transmission when you're off-roading. Number four, there's no cooling lines underneath. You don't have transmission cooling lines running underneath, so you don't have hard lines or rubber lines or anything like that that are gonna get torn out or caught on anything or have an issue if you go off-roading and you have some kind of clearance issue and you run into a rock or a tree or a tree stump or you go through a mud hole and there's a hidden rock underneath. You're not gonna have to worry about ripping out any plugs or cooling lines or electronics or anything like that. It's a little bit more peace of mind when you're actually thrashing your vehicle off-road. Number five, you can be sent into limp mode if there is an issue with a sensor or the transmission, uh, some parameters aren't correct, if the fluid level isn't correct. It can send you into limp mode and you're not able to shift beyond second gear uh, some Jeeps are different, but most of the time it's beyond second gear, you can't get past second gear, and you can't go above a certain speed. That's to save the transmission from grenading itself and having more issues than it currently thinks it has. But sometimes it just thinks it has issues, it doesn't actually have a problem. I've had my friends chase problems for many, many months, uh, looking through sensors and this and that, and changing fluids and filters, and all kinds of different stuff, programming, and it ends up just not helping and uh, eventually they do get it figured out but it's just a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of money to hunt down some of these issues because you took it off-roading and you got mud or dirt or something in one of the sensors and it's not happy that also leads me into number six uh, automatics don't like water crossings as much if you do take your Jeep off-road the chances are you're gonna hit a water crossing I'm not saying you're gonna be going through rivers or into streams but there could be some sort of a big puddle or a deep mud hole or something that you can't avoid that you have to go through. And unfortunately, you never know what's going to be underneath there. And sometimes if you get stuck, filling up an automatic transmission with water is very, very bad for it. And they do fill up quite easily because they have a lot of ports and a lot of different ways of water to get in. A manual transmission is a little bit more sealed. But a manu uh, automatic transmission has different sensors, different plugs, and different lines going in. So if any of those are leaking or any of those aren't perfectly sealed, you're going to have water get in. To this day, I have never had an issue with water in my transmission. If you've seen my off-roading videos, believe me, I'm surprised too. Knock on wood, I hope I don't have issues, but it's a manual. And so far, so good. I've never had a problem. But I've gone through some pretty crazy stuff with it, let's just say that. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the videos, then go check them out, especially the last one that we did. Uh, I'll leave it at that, it was nuts. <laughs> Number seven, it is easy to cut the power in a manual transmission when you need to cut the power. What does that mean? Say you're going up an obstacle or going down an obstacle or you're gonna go drive off the trail into a tree or something. You can hit the brakes, yes, but it's also a lot easier to just press your clutch in, stop the power, and if you're climbing an obstacle or something, you won't go further than you want to go because there's no more power. Even though you press the brakes in an automatic, you have to slow all that momentum down and slow down 
the fact that the transmission is still pushing the vehicle. Even when you're in drive and you hold the brakes, it's still pushing the vehicle. It wants you to move. So yes, that could be good when you want to crawl over an obstacle, but most of the time when you want to crawl over an obstacle, you're not going to be able to just let go of the brake and have it crawl up the obstacle. Very rarely. Most of the time, you're going to have to give it some gas. And if you're in an automatic, it's going to want to jump and bump over the obstacle unless you're very, very good with your throttle. And even if you're the best driver in the world, you're still going to have instances where it's going to jump forward on you if you're driving an automatic, especially in low range. When you have a manual, it's a lot easier to feather the clutch in and move yourself nice and easy and steady forward because you can sense the second that the power engages and you can crawl yourself up that obstacle. Same thing though, you have to be able to know what you're doing. If you're not careful with your clutch, you could let go of the clutch too quickly and you could jump forward as well. So same thing, but it's a lot easier to control yourself and to control your movements when you have a manual, in my opinion. And going into my next point, number eight, Cutting the power when you need it most. Automatic transmissions are known to shift gears <laughs> whenever they want. And even if you have your automatic transmission in first gear, you have it locked in first gear and you're driving through a mud hole or a sinkhole or water crossing or anything that you don't want to stop in. Uh, there's been instances where my friend in his brand new Jeep has put it in first gear. He's going and because of the way that the, the vehicle senses the traction is not there, it wants to cut the power because it thinks you're just spinning tires and it cuts the power for a second. And that jolt or that, that one second of it cutting the power or it shifting gears could be the difference between you getting through that obstacle and you getting stuck in that obstacle and having to get pulled out or winched out or worse. And believe me, I've seen it. I've seen it happen to my friends where they've gone through obstacles, trying to go through the hole or the water crossing and it'll cut power on them halfway through and it's it's shitty it's quite dangerous and it sucks because then they're stuck in the vehicle in the middle of a water crossing and now they have to figure out what to do because they're pressing the gas and it's it's not letting them go so they have to reset the vehicle now you have to turn it off and turn it back on inside the water crossing that's always a no-no you never want to do that so definitely guys uh manual transmission you put it in first gear you turn off your traction you put your foot to the floor it's gonna go it's gonna keep going until it doesn't run anymore <laughs> until you take it out of gear like unless the vehicle crashes into a brick wall or into a tree it's gonna keep moving and it's gonna keep going and unless you get stuck in a mud hole that's really deep like i have the vehicle will continue to go even though i got stuck my tires kept spinning it didn't cut the power it didn't say that okay we were in a situation that we shouldn't be moving we shouldn't damage the vehicle there isn't too many nannies and too many computers in it that stop you from doing what you want when you're off-road and when you're off-road you don't want those nannies and those assistants to tell you oh this might not be safe you should already know what you're doing is either safe or not safe and you should be in control not the computer in the vehicle and that was number nine there's, there's less nannies, there's less uh, sensors, there's less things to worry about, there's just less junk that's going to get in the way of you having fun and you taking your vehicle back out on the road and getting home after. Because a lot of times people will go off-roading, they'll get some, sort, some sensor wet, some sensor dirty, and they have to tow their vehicle home even though it's perfectly fine. And two days later, after everything dries out or after they clean it out, it drives perfectly fine. So watch out for little things like that. There is problems with traction control, uh, stability control, and it cutting power on you at the wrong times. Number 10, you just have more overall control of the vehicle. You can control your speed better, you can control how you climb things, you can control your hill descent, you can control what gear you're in, what gear you're going to stay in, you can control pretty much every aspect of the vehicle a little bit more. And if you're not accustomed to driving automatic, uh, if you're not accustomed to driving manual, Definitely, I would recommend getting the automatic. There's nothing wrong with off-roading an automatic. They're great, they're awesome. Like I said, I would, almost, I would go out and I would be hard pressed not to buy the automatic right now. And that's because they're such great vehicles and the transmissions have come so far in the, in the years that it's just, it's almost dumb not to get the automatic, but I'll explain more in a second. So number 11 is like a quick little bonus item, but it's an anti-theft device. <laughs> a lot of people these days cannot drive manual. And if you can drive manual, great. And if you can't drive manual, go out and learn because a lot of people can't drive it. And if you have a vehicle that's manual, 
Uh, not only will your friends bug you less to take it out and uh, drive it with you when you're off-roading and go, hey, can I take it for a spin? Because they might not know how to drive it. <laughs> and people are going to be less likely to steal your vehicle because if they can't even get it moving or they look at it and they go, how do you do that? Then definitely they're going to move on to the next Jeep or the next guy's vehicle and you're going to be safe, hopefully. <laughs> So that was my list. I know that I missed a couple things for sure. So if I missed something, let me know in the comment section. Help everybody out. Add to the list. Let them know what they should look out for or why it's better to have a manual over an automatic. Or what your opinion is and why you think an automatic is better. Because at the end of the day, I'm not saying that I'm right. This is just my opinion. I've been off-roading for two years. I'm by no means an expert. I'm by no means... Uh, a seasoned veteran. I'm still learning every single day. This is what I've learned and this is my opinion. I'm trying to share it with you guys for everybody out there that's like me and starting out or just wants to get into off-roading and basically wants to know what the ins and outs are and why I should do something over the other thing because if you don't know why you're doing something then it's hard to, to get yourself to do it. But if you understand oh, I'm driving the manual because of this reason or I'm driving the automatic because of this reason or I bought these tires because of this or this is the reason I did this you kind of know that you feel more confident in your vehicle and you know how to use your vehicle better because you don't just say, oh yeah, it's easier to drive, that's why I bought it. Well, no, you know that this, this, and this reason is the reason you're driving that vehicle. And you'll have a lot more fun in the vehicle that better suits you. So don't by any means go out there and get a manual because I'm telling you manuals are better. I like manuals better, but if you like automatics, by all means, they're great vehicles to take off-road. And that comes up to my, my last point. If I was to go buy a brand new Jeep today, the reason I would be hard pressed not to get the automatic is the automatic is great. They actually uh, shift great. I've driven the Gladiator and the JL off-road and both of them were automatic. Both of them were great vehicles. Uh, I enjoyed both of them. I loved taking them both out. I didn't feel limited at any point. I didn't feel restrained by the, by the automatic. I actually felt like it was easier to drive off-road and the eight speed that they put in those is amazing. You can put 37 inch tires on a stock Rubicon or a stock JL or JT, which is the Gladiator. And you can take that thing off roading and you will not notice that it has bigger tires. Take it back on the road and you will not notice it has bigger tires. Because of the eight speed transmission, it has such a close ratio shift that you don't notice that it's actually has the bigger tires. It compensates for that so well you still have tons of power on road and off road. And that's the main reason that I would be hard pressed not to get the automatic because you still feel like you're driving a normal vehicle and you don't feel that power restraint and that lugging of having big tires and having to re-gear right away. A lot of people that drive the new JLs will tell you, you can put bigger tires on it and if you have the automatic, you don't have to re-gear right away because it drives great. You don't notice it as much. You still have almost all the power. I'd say 80 to 90% of the power that you had with the stock size tires, which is amazing. But for all the reasons that I just mentioned, I'm kind of in the middle because I like having a manual and having the peace of mind of not having it get torn up and ripped up and it just being able to get me home. But... I will be in the market for a new Jeep or a new Gladiator soon, so definitely uh, give me your two cents. Let me know what you guys think, because I'm not set one way or the other. I kind of think I will go for the manual. I'm a little bit more leaning that way, but it would be great to have an automatic. I could just sit back, relax, drive it to the trail, and then once I'm done off-roading, same thing. You sit back, relax, and drive it home, and you don't have to think too much about it, and it's just a little bit more user-friendly in the sense of, you have less input and less things to worry about while you're driving. And that's great for long trips. And I always have to drive minimum two to three hours to get to an off-road trail. So for me, that's a great bonus. It's not having to shift in traffic and having to just kill myself getting to the trail and then be tired once I already get there. So hopefully this video helps you guys out. Hopefully it was uh, somewhat helpful. And definitely, guys, if you are new around here, jump down there, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Let me know what you guys enjoyed about this video, and let me know if I missed anything, and if there's anything you guys want to add. And I will add that we still have a few spots left in the free stickers. I am giving away some free stickers with everybody that's buying merch for the first 10 uh, people that buy merch on the new uh, release of the new key tags and the new shirts. So the shirts are up, the key tags are up. If you guys want to jump in there, then definitely I appreciate the help and hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. So until then guys, ride safe out there.
Peace.